Hello, it is Tuesday, June 28th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Tuesday puzzle today, so as with yesterday's, we should have in store for us a relatively accessible, themed edition of the New York Times Crossword. And I see what looks like an interesting grid in there with several T-shapes. So this T-shaped edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Dan Stoko, Quotidiophile, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the inimitable Connor O'Neill. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel and help um, helping to make this series a sustainable part of my daily work. And thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. If you'd like to become a benefactor like those five and get the uh, Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. Of course, there's a link in the description field underneath the video as well. And um, of course, if you back at any level, you can get access to all of the Daily Solve bonus videos that have gone up on the Patreon, such as, well, <laughs> soon, once I contend with this mega long video, this uh, extremely extended edition of the Constructor's Corner series in which I solve crosswords created by members of the Daily Solve community in the Daily Solve Discord chat server in the Constructor's Corner channel over there. So do uh, maybe <laughs> maybe in the intervening time before I'm able to get that video published, which would, which, <clears throat> excuse me, which should be very soon, uh, maybe you can solve some of those puzzles more quickly than I did. I think I need some water. One moment. Okay, let's continue on. Why don't we start solving the puzzle? This is a Tuesday puzzle. It just occurred to me that perhaps that's, perhaps the T's are in honor of Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, uh, June 28th, 2022. And the puzzle was constructed by Scott Graham. Someone someone said in a comment, it seems like every constructor I mentioned has constructed a few dozen crosswords. It is a common thing, I will grant you. But Scott Graham is a debut constructor. So how about that? Only a single New York Times puzzle constructed by Scott Graham. And it's the one we're going to solve today. It was edited as always, by Will Shorts. And look at that. All of the black cells are arranged into T-shapes. So perhaps it is a Tuesday tribute puzzle. Couldn't think of a third T word there. Oh, oh, it is. Every single clue begins with T. <laughs> Ridiculous. Typical ice cream servings. Scoops, perhaps? Uh, if one is talkative, one is chatty. I keep trying to think of T words to service the answers, but that's not, that's definitely not going to be the case. It couldn't possibly be the case because uh, if you needed, for instance, all of these downs to start with T, then the across would have to be nothing but T's. So that's obviously not going to happen. Theatrically presented, could be staged. You could stage a play theatrically. A tropical sort of source of milk could be a coconut, coconut milk. And a type of sandal is a, a one something, maybe? Turn the blank cheek. Turn the other cheek. One might be advised. The eagles on scoreboards. Oh, Philadelphia eagles. I do think I recognize that. Let's try FPHI for Philadelphia, I would imagine. Taurus, Virgo, Libra, etc. These are all um, zodiac signs. And try and do better could mean top this. So look at that. That's a bit of alliteration. Top, no, no, top this. Two T words. Maybe maybe we'll get a few of those, actually. Maybe that will be the official theme, whereas the unofficial theme seems to be just the letter T. But of course, the theme of the puzzle itself will have to involve answers in the grid, I think, anyway. Two pair beats it in poker. Ace high? Ace high, presumably. I didn't know that. But that's because I don't know how to play poker. <laughs> uh, type of sandal. Open toe. There we go. And if someone has totally vanished, they've gone. Theater's entr'acte. Between, uh, between the acts, I suppose. And twosome is a duo. And a tantalizing film preview is a teaser trailer. There we go. So that does seem to be the theme. This is an extremely T-full puzzle. And we have our top of this and our theater trailer. Uh, so we'll, we'll have more of those, presumably more alliterative phrases throughout the grid. Tip of a plane is the nose. A tub accessory is what? What about this? Trade could be 
trade could be sell as in sort of to trade goods, to sell goods, but I'm not really sure that it works. I mean, it technically works, but I don't know if it's correct. Tailoring related is, I don't know, let's solve these downs. Top dog at a corp, a corporation. The corp lets us know we'll be abbreviating the answer, so it could be the CEO, the chief executive officer. Tort basis could be harm, um, meaning the basis for legal action. So tort dealing with the harm done to the uh, uh, relevant party. Twin blade razor blade. Oh, now this is something that used to come up. This might be Atra. This used to come up in the crossword all the time. It's a, it's a uh, razor brand name, and perhaps it's a twin bladed one. And it used to be a very common bit of crossword ease. I've not seen it as often recently. Thrash and Toto and the Wizard of Oz, e.g. A terrier. Toto, I think, must have been a little terrier. Uh, the dog from The Wizard of Oz, of course. Two-word tenet of improv comedy. They, they always say yes and in improv comedy. You should follow up what your scene partner has done with yes and instead of contradicting them or, or denying it. Uh, traditional medicine uses its oil tea tree. You see that all the time on sort of bottles of salves and things, tea tree oil. Terrible things are horrors. Tyranny of the affair. Maura Tierney, that's, a, that's the name of an actor, isn't it? Maura Tierney, I think. Thrash could be trounce. You could trounce somebody, yes, in a game. My first thought was trouble, but that doesn't mean anything, not relevant. Uh, trapeze, the unexpurgated diary of Anais Nin. That must be right. Uh, Nin certainly was a diarist, so that would make sense. Trade and take heed, blank summer comes, or cuckoo birds do sing. Is it air? Take heed, air summer come. Um, tailoring related. Oh, something suit, maybe? Trade. Well, we'll come back to it. Tagged surreptitiously on an email it could be BCC'd, blind, carbon copied, to um, include somebody on an email without uh, letting the other recipients know. Tall one or cold one in Germany? Oh, beer. So uh, you could say, give me a tall one or give me a cold one, referring to a beer. And then beer is B-I-E-R in Germany. In German, the German language, I mean. Title role for Liz Taylor in brief. She famously played Cleopatra. So Cleo in brief. Tipplers, uh, tipplers drink this in the belief it helps sober them up. I don't know what hair of the dog is sort of said to be a hangover cure. Um, well, it probably is going to start with a T because this, this being the central answer in the grid, I assume it's going to be one of our theme answers like top of this own oh, tea tree. I don't think I observed that when I entered tea tree. So we have top this tea tree, teaser trailer, this, probably another one here, I suspect. We'll start with a T because it will be symmetrical with teaser trailer. Um, New York Times Crosswords is generally rigorously symmetrical, except when the theme requires otherwise. We can see this crossword is radially symmetrical, not, not vertically or horizontally, but, but radially. So this T shape uh, that's sort of in the general south, southeastern quadrant of the grid is symmetrical if we rotated the grid 180 degrees with the T-shape in the northwestern quadrant. So anyway, that's why I suspect this is another theme answer. So the thieves dash probably starts with a T. And transcendentalist who wrote Walden Thoreau. So it does start with a T. And let's keep going. Three Stooges member for a time. Um... I don't remember all the names of the Stooges, so this must have been one who wasn't one of the core three. Touch and go singer Okasek, Rick Okasek of the Cars, or Okasek? Actually, not sure. I think I've always said Okasek, but I don't know if that's correct. Anyway, the singer of the Cars, the band. Toxicological ER cases, ODs, overdoses. That would make sense with toxicology. To what effect? How is that true? 
Thames Side Art Gallery. So this would be the uh, Tate Modern, uh, which is a, um, uh, I think, maybe the most visited modern art museum in the world. Don't know. It would probably be either that or MoMA in New York. But the Tate Britain has become, oh, sorry, the Tate Britain is the is a different art gallery further south in London. But the Tate Modern is, um, I think those are first two, even though technically the Tate, the original Tate, uh, no, no, that's wrong. They're both on the Thames. Sorry. This could be referring to the Tate Modern or the Tate Britain. My mistake. Anyway, I'm going to move on. Sorry for that digression. Um, tailoring related is... Oh, sartorial. I see. Yes. So related to, in this case, men's fashion. Sartor you could make a sartorial choice in uh, how your suit was tailored, for instance. Trade could... Oh, trade is swap. That That's better than sell. Take heed. This does look like air, doesn't it? A tub accessory could be a shower curtain. There we go. This is what a tailor seeks to provide is... Oh, that's, oh, look at that. We have Taylor here and here. Uh, the perfect fit. And this does start with T, and it's in what looks like it could be a um, a theme. Oh, it's, it starts and ends with a T, but I think that's a, either a coincidence or maybe just a light nod by the constructor, but it's not theme-related. Uh, tipplers drink this. Oh, this isn't it. This is not thematic. It isn't, after all. Look at that. I jumped to conclusions. And you know what that does to you and me. Um, well, that was a shame <laughs> on my part. Uh, so these two uh, symmetrically disposed answers are theme-related, and they, there are alliterative T phrases, but this one's not. Tipplers drink hot coffee in the belief it helps sober them up. I don't think it, I don't think it actually does, but it could help you simply feel more alert and maybe, maybe make you a bit less groggy, but I don't think it will do anything about your hangover expressly. Throat clearing sound, ahem. I had to do that earlier in this episode. Uh, telenovela, e.g. Oh, a soap. We had this in the opposite order in a recent crossword. We had something like Mexican soap operas or something, and the answer was telenovelas. Uh, here we have the other way around. Travelers from afar, for short, could be ETs, extraterrestrials. And what about this? Toward the stern on a ship would be aft. And then that looks like Thieves' Stash maybe is a treasure trove. There we have it. Thoroughly overhauls, reworks, and a thing checked at a polling station could be voter ID? Is that how you'd phrase that? You'd say, could you show me your voter ID? Hmm. I would think of it, you'd say photo ID or something, but anyway, let's check the crosses and see. TDs or FGs? Is this touchdowns or field goals? Are they points? Um, seems like too many letters for that. Teriyaki appetizer, maybe. So, edamame. Edamame? Yes, E-D-A-M-A-M-E, -E, yes. Edamame. You could, have, you could have edamame served at a Japanese restaurant, um, perhaps before your teriyaki dish. Okay, taken dishonestly. Stolen? Straightforward enough. Oh, I see. TDs or FGs? Ah, right. So it looks like this is going to be a singular, oh, sorry, a plural clue, because even though it's an or, it looks like we're referring to touchdowns or field goals. So you could say either one of those is an example of points. Indeed, it isn't or a singular or clue after all, because you could say touchdowns is a stat. A stat is touchdowns. That's so interesting. A statistic. All right. Here we have two all staff notes. Uh, it's not my name, uh, Remo, but rather a memo. And thwacked biblically could be smote, smited. Transgressive, say, could be immoral. And tiger's slot on the schedule e.g. would be tea time. And that would be, I think, <laughs> I think that would be an effective title for this crossword, tea time, because it is time for tea in this puzzle. 
And we're spelling it, of course, T-E-E rather than T-E-A because we're referring to golf tees. A tabby's cry, so a tabby cat could, could mew. And the third largest country in the European Union after France and Spain is Sweden. Interesting. I wouldn't have guessed that. That is very interesting. Um, and a type of chair is an Ames chair, right? That's a sort of famous chair design, Ames chair. And here we have Turin, a uh, Turin-based automaker, Alfa Romeo. That looks perfectly correct. Oh, Shemp. Is Shemp one of the Stooges? I've heard of that. Yeah, I've heard of that. I've heard that name before is what I mean to say as one of the Stooges, but I, I didn't think of it earlier. And then, so it's Larry, Moe, and Curly are the sort of main ones, right? And then I guess Shemp and I don't know if there were any others. Okay. Treats very unfairly in slang. Um, probably ends in an S, doesn't it? And thought through without is sussed out. Trojan war god Ares, the god of war. Tempo could be pace. Pick up the pace, pick up the tempo, go a little faster. Through this crossword, we're almost done. We don't need to pick up the tempo. Tempo uh, Tomato shade is red. Tomato is red, of course. Oh, look at this. We have another Italian um, another Italian car make. We have Ferrari. Uh, Ferrari Testarossa or Portofino, which are um, two Ferrari models then. So uh, table the rehearsal for a bit. Oh. Oh, this wasn't pace. It was rate. Tempo's rate. Equally plausible. Uh, table the rehearsal for a bit could be to take 10. And of course, this is the uh, American um, usage of table, which means to sort of delay or, or push back as opposed to the British meaning, which would mean let's table this and discuss it right now. Okay, treats very, very unfairly in slang. Ah, shaft. You could say I was shafted. I was treated very unfairly. And then thunderous as a crowd, the crowd could be described as a roar. There we go. So this is what I would describe as an extremely gentle theme. It's sort of a, it's it's interesting. This is, well, so first let's just, just let's just discuss it quickly. So we have our T's littered throughout the grid, serving as our grid art. And then we have several alliterative two-word phrases each of whose individual words begins with T. So top of this, tea tree, uh, teaser trailer, treasure trove, uh, take 10, and tea time. And I think what's what's a nice tidy little touch about this puzzle is that tea time is essentially, I mean, it's not really the revealer of the puzzle. It doesn't reveal the puzzle because it doesn't explain anything about it, but it's kind of a self-explanatory theme with, I think this is a, a pseudo revealer. The revealer would ordinarily have an actual description of what's going on in the puzzle, in the clue. And then you, you'd fill out the answer and it would, it would mean something relevant to that, to that clue and that theme. Here, I think this is essentially serving as a title of the puzzle, Tea Time, um, phonetically. And I think that kind of makes it a pseudo revealer. And especially, especially because it's, it's very close to the most classical location of the revealer as predicted by Lyle's law, which is that the revealer will be down in the acrosses in generally speaking, the Southeast of the grid. Uh, and that's where this one is. So anyway, another relatively gentle puzzle, I would say after yesterday's, um, perhaps just the slightest bit more challenging than Mondays. But again, as I always say, it's almost impossible to calibrate that kind of evaluation. Um, in general, I think this was a very approachable puzzle with a very simple theme that didn't require it to be... You didn't have to figure out anything about the theme in order to successfully complete the puzzle. You could just solve the puzzle as normal, in theory, never even notice the theme. Uh, but, but it's there, and it was very gentle. And that's that for today's puzzle. So let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. If I can find them on my telephone here. Where did I put them? Um, sorry, what have I done? Here we go. All right. Oh, I think I only had two. So 
Ryan Levick says, we've recently seen several instances of where the New York Times crossword's lack of diacritical marks leads to spelling non-English words incorrectly from the point of view of the native language. In today's puzzle, the lack of the N with the tilde over it uh, leads to, is it the Iñero? Leads to particularly interesting results. The answer to 10 down, year in Buenos Aires, should be año with the uh, tilde. Instead, ano is used, which unfortunately means anus in Spanish. And then Ellen Eton replies to say, it's so strange they could have easily said year in Priscilla. Yeah, that's a good point. So I suppose Spanish rather than um, Portuguese. Uh, anyway, thank you for those very interesting comments from Ryan and Elon. And then Sfumato says, tarps are usually brought out at ballparks during rain delays to protect the carefully manicured fine grain, fine clay granules that comprise the infield and pitcher's mound from promptly becoming mud. It usually takes a rather large crew to haul it out and roll it back up, so it's fun to watch. Well, that's interesting. So that's why tarps were particular to ballparks in yesterday's puzzle. And there we have it. I think that was it from yesterday's. Thank you so much for joining me for this edition of The Daily Solve and today's um, alliterative Tuesday puzzle. I'll be back tomorrow for the Wednesday puzzle, maybe a, smi a tiny step up in difficulty. We'll see. It will be themed yet again. So do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.